Hi, welcome to today's MLA Minute. We're going to continue working through the Sermon on the Mount today, and we're going to finish up chapter 5, uh, Matthew chapter 5. So we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. So if you would, read with me. He says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? But if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Don't, uh, do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, there's a couple of things I want to pull out here. And if you'll remember from yesterday, we talked about uh, the eye for an eye and how that came from the Old Testament law giving instruction for punishment. And now you read here, you have heard that it's been said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. One thing we need to clarify, this does not come from the Old Testament law. It's not there. Well, where did they hear it from? Where did it come from? Where it came from was the Pharisees. You see, this was a Pharisaical uh, teaching. And the reason was, was they justified it saying, your neighbor is a Jew and your enemy is a Gentile. And so that was how they justified it. But it didn't come from Scripture. It didn't come from the Old Testament. It is, however, commonly the mindset that we have. I will love those who are like me, those from my neighborhood, those from my clique, those from my town, those from my personal subculture, and I will hate my enemy. We can see how well that's working uh, in the United States across the world so it causes hatred and division to be the norm of course we can see that cultures don't work with that but he's saying here Christ is saying no 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 do not hate your enemy do good to your enemy do good to your enemy bless those who curse you pray for those who spitefully use you these are things that are difficult for us. And why should we do them? Well, honestly, when we look at it here, the reason why has nothing to do with the other person. It has to do with us. Why do we do this? He says, because you will be a, a son of your Father in heaven. You will be a son. Is he saying you have to do this uh, to have eternal life? No. No. Not only does that conflict what we see Jesus saying elsewhere, but he's already your father before you're a son. We know when we look around in uh, Scripture, there are a couple of different ways that you can look at this. One is you can stay within the Sermon on the Mount. You can go back to verse 9 where he talks about people will call you sons of God. Maybe this is you're doing, you're living in such a way that people are seeing your good works and they're recognizing it and they're calling you Son of God. Could be, but I think a more accurate way is to look at it throughout Scripture. There is a differentiation between children and sons. Uh, and what it comes down to is that of, of blessing and, and status, relationship. A son is more mature and has a different relationship with the father. And a son implies inheritance. You want to be a son? You want to be mature in your relationship with your father in heaven? Do these things. You want to have inheritance in, the eternal, in your eternal life? Do these things. That's what he's saying here. He's saying, if you do this, you'll get an inheritance and you'll get the relationship. And then when he closes out there, he says, therefore, 
you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, ultimately, none of us will be perfect this side of heaven. But what he's saying is, you want more in heaven, you want to live that way, you need to be working that way. You need to be loving your enemy, blessing those who curse you, good to those who spitefully use you. And he points out, if you're not, you're no different than the tax collectors. Tax collectors were, of course, shunned. He's saying, you're just as bad as they are if that's how you live. Now, what about us? Do we want to live that way knowing that we are just as bad as the bad people, the people who are shunned? Or do we want to be sons of God? The choice is, is ours. How are we going to live? Are we going to pray for those who spitefully use us? It's a difficult thing to do. But forgiveness is more for the person giving the forgiveness than the one being forgiven. Why? Because it changes our heart. And when it changes our heart, when it softens our heart, it makes it where we can have that relationship with Christ, with God, that, that we want to have, that He wants us to have. And so that's why we do it. We leave justice to the government. We talked about that yesterday. We leave justice to the government. And now we respond in forgiveness and by returning good for, uh, returning evil with good. They're evil to us. We return with good. We pray for them. We help them. We be good to them. That's what he's saying here. Let's go ahead and close with prayer. Dear Lord, we uh, come to you today. Lord, we thank you for your word, for your commandment. Lord, I just pray that you would be with us as we go through our lives. Help us, instead of hating those, to, to, love, our, uh, to love our enemies, to pray for them, to encourage them, and just to love on them, Lord. Pray that you would help us to give us the strength to do this. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.